Dun, 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 Welcome to Turbo Throwdown. Oh I'm your host, Teddy. Oh. With me today is... Spencer. Oh, shit. Wait. Alex. Sorry. Roll <laughs> play. <Turbo> Zone. <laughs> I thought I was Spencer for a minute. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you go to the Turbo Zone. You might be a whole other person. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Turbo Throwdown, everybody. Uh, this is a fantastic series where Teddy and myself, not Teddy, Alex, uh, we go through the games on. I'm not holding the uh, cartridge this episode or the, or the disc this episode. It's uh, on my shelf. What's on What's on my shelf? Sonic is uh, Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection. Just pretend like I'm holding mine up too. Uh, we go through each of the games, pair them against each other, make them battle, and it's like a racket style tournament. So, last episode we did Vector Vector Man, Ve Vector Man One and Two. Vector Man, the alligator fan. Find the computer room. And uh, we uh, <laughs> we sure did. <laughs> it, it, it was a pretty one-sided battle. <laughs> Vector Man One came out on top by a by a country mile. Vector Man One or Vector Man One. One. Right. <laughs> Either way, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly the superior game. Congratulations, Vector Man. You'll be moving on. But today, we'll be throwing down with, uh, you know, some some games that uh, maybe don't get as much recognition. Some some that have some real momentum to them. What are the, what are the games today, Alex? Today we have E-SWAT versus Super Thunder Blade. E-SWAT. City Under Siege. What a game. Or uh, or in Japan, it's called... Hold on. It's called Cyber Police Eswat, which I think is a much cooler name. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to give credit to the announcer for the Genesis version. <laughs> Eswat. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty great. Ahead of its time. Are you ready to jump in? Yeah, let's jump. Do you want to announce uh, the next episode now? Sure. So the next episode is one that we were going to do, a f like, I guess now three episodes ago. The next episode is going to be Fantasy Star 1 versus Fantasy Star 2. Uh, we put it off, and um, we're ready to go this time. But we might need, like, a few weeks for it, you know, because there are RPGs. So we want to, you know, sink, sink our teeth a little bit, you know, before we... We come back with our findings. Right, because next month is also RPG month on the button mappers, so we're kind of juggling, you know, our games here. Spencer, the real Spencer, we're not pulling your leg this time, so get excited. Keep your pants on, buddy. And, uh, yeah, real. it's going to be – we're going to go into the fantasy zone, so get ready. <laughs> I'll pull his leg as long as he keeps his pants on. <laughs> <laughs> And if he doesn't, once those pants, once those pants come off, I'm not pulling his leg anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pulling the pants uh, back on. So yeah, next time will be the battle of the RPGs. Um, and today we have a battle of two different types of RPGs, right? <laughs> really, <laughs> really popular games. <laughs> Rotor playing game <laughs> or something. Uh. I'll be representing and, uh, Super this, Thunder Blade, and Alex will have E SWAT. This is one of those episodes that doesn't make any sense. It's like the we, what's the one we we did uh, Shinobi Three and Beyond Oasis. Mm -hmm. We just got to start somewhere with some of these games, you know. <laughs> right, right. Uh, I will say that when we put this together, I had never played E SWAT, so I just assumed it was another helicopter game, kind of like a Desert Strike or something. Oh, you didn't know what it was. <laughs> no. So I was like, oh, Super Thunder Blade and E-SWAT. You know, clearly. Helicopter games. <laughs> nope. That's not yeah. E-SWAT. <laughs> I mean, you you can fly in E-SWAT. So. Logical You're, connection well, after <laughs> all. Battle of the Flight Sims. Battle of the Flight. Battle of the Flight of the Bumblebees. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I just started naming these things versus whatever it is. So. We'll stick with uh, Super Thunder Blade versus E SWAT. Who's up first? Uh, I'd like to go. I want to talk about 
Thunderblade. Thunder. Be my guest. Thunder Blade is an arcade game developed by Sega in the 80s, in 1987. Uh, it's a game that is was iconic at the time. It was based off of a movie from 1983 called Blue Thunder. And uh, it's basically revolves around the concept of flying a helicopter. There's a lot of cool aerial maneuvers. It uses the same kind of a visual style as some other early Sega arcade games like Space Harrier and Afterburner, where it's almost like a 3D effect where uh, your uh, icon on screen, in this case, it's a helicopter, is you can move it around the screen, but the rest of the environment is like propelling forwards towards you. So the original game was like four stages. It got some re, uh, re-releases as well as a remake on the 3DS. And a lot of people like thought of it as a favorite. So a sequel was released a year later for the Genesis and Sega Mega Drive called Super Thunder Blade. That's the game that we're talking about today. It's not the original Thunder Blade. This is not just a port of the arcade game. It's its own game. Now it's very similar. The uh, gameplay style is very much the same. Uh, You'll have like helicopters and tanks that are like approaching you on screen. They'll be firing bullets at you that you have to kind of dodge. The way I would describe the gameplay is kind of frantic. You're kind of piloting the helicopter all over the place trying to avoid the uh, the meatball bullets. They look like giant Mario fireballs. And, uh, you know, you're also avoiding environmental distractions like buildings or like cave entrances or the classic stage four metal pipes. And it can be really challenging maneuvering around all of these things in the original game or in this one. Uh, also, while you are flying, you have kind of an auto fire if you just hold down uh, one of the buttons it basically unleashes this kind of uh, Gatling gun style attack from the helicopter and then it fires out missiles every uh, couple seconds Uh, this game is kind of different from the original in that halfway through each stage there's like a mid boss and then you close out the stage by switching to an overhead view which the original game does as well and you take out this kind of like Harrier, or this like kind of uh, aircraft carrier at the end of the stage um, by just firing on its like uh, missile ports. And then uh, usually it just automatically self-destructs anyway. Uh, it's freaking tough. This is a really hard game. I found myself dying quite a lot. I found myself unable to get past stage two without using the rewind feature. I didn't even bother with save states. I used them, but to me, it's just like, let me just rewind and see how I can avoid this bullet. You're oftentimes dodging eight, nine bullets on screen while also trying to maneuver around like these pillars in a cave or trying to go through a door uh, inside the cave. Like that's why stage two was so tough for me. And this game does not have continues. You can set it to easy difficulty and you can max out at seven lives, but Easy difficulty, don't be deceived, doesn't actually make the game any easier. I think it just allows you to stock up lives more easily with your points. That's usually how some of these uh, Sega Genesis games would work. Uh, The frame rate sucks. Uh, So back in the day, it wasn't as uh, harped on, but there were reviewers from the 2000s, even IGN, that went so far as to say uh, the game just couldn't make the jump to console from its arcade cabinet counterpart. Uh, Sadly, this game has not held up, but if you want the Thunderblade helicopter arcade experience, there are a number of ways to do it. Uh, I think the 3DS is the best way, alongside maybe emulating the arcade version. Uh, That is granted, uh, if you can get the Sega 3D Classics, I think it's on there. Super Thunderblade. No, it's oh wait, never yeah. been on like the cartridge. I, I was gonna say you can't download it anymore. <laughs> right, you can't download it anymore, but I believe it's on the uh, the compilation mm. cartridge. I have that too. I need to get on there. Uh, yeah, this is like classic Sega, like you said, Space Harrier, um, Afterburner. What's the other one? Galaxy Force, right? That's another. It feels one. like that. 
Yeah, like that type of like classic Sega shooter. Um, and this was my first time actually completing the game on Genesis because it's always been one that I've I've started playing many times on Genesis and then I my eyes quickly begin to <laughs> hurt uh, because the frame rate is kind of bad. It's a very choppy looking game. Uh, and then I just kind of put to the side. Um, but this is my first time actually making it through the entire game. And uh, you know what? I have to say I had fun. <laughs> there, there are things to like in Super Thunder Blade. Um, and yeah, it's a cool game. Okay, in completing the game, how? what was your method? Rewind. <laughs> <laughs> that last boss, especially. So mo most of it, I could I could do. Um, I found it's hard to like judge depth in this title on, on the Genesis. Uh, like especially especially that third level with the pillars and stuff, whatever it was. Um, I ran into shit constantly because it was hard to judge like where I was on the screen and where the things were coming from. Um, and the same thing with like, some of the projectiles, too. It was hard to judge death. Um, so really, I had to use Rewind for a, for, for a lot of this to make it through it. Um, I, otherwise, I don't know how far I would have gotten. <laughs> uh, and that last boss, is especially, because they, they throw, like, I don't even know. There's, like, t like, 12 different cannons shooting at you from the thing and then like the main part in the like in the middle of like the carrier and you have to or like the rocket whatever it is and you have to take out all of the different uh cannons and yeah it's just brutal <laughs> up to that point i didn't even know you could fly backwards me either me either i was like <laughs> how am i supposed to get the ones on the bottom <laughs> and then and then i was because i'm playing on this on the switch for f for convenience and i pushed like b or something and i started to back up and i was like oh what what Think you can back up because <laughs> i thought maybe like there was like a bomb or something i could use you know i was like what am i supposed to do here mm -hmm. <laughs> one thing i like about the original game that's not really present in this one I played the 3DS one last night, is that in addition to uh, the kind of like the variations in the um, perspective, I guess, you can fly up and down so that changes with the depth. And actually, I don't I don't have a 3D functional 3DS, an oxymoron, but with the 3D effect, it actually works pretty well. You can also adjust the helicopter's speed. These are things you can't do in this game. And when you get to those like final Harrier section, I don't know if you know if I'm using the word Harrier right, but uh, when you get to those aircraft carrier sections at the end, um, you can like fly up and down the screen. And this one is only left to right. So my strategy with this was like, hover left, hover right. Oh, don't co like corner yourself. But it was, was kind of, I wouldn't say it was like a, the most engaging gameplay style, you know? Hover to the left. Hover to the right. <laughs> Crisscross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, you know, and we, okay, so I'm trying to remember, we don't have the, the Genesis port of Space Harrier 2, right? On this collection. I believe that's only on the modern collection, not the Sonic's Ultimate, which is thankful <laughs> i don't like i don't like that port of space harrier 2 at all and i will say that super thunder blade on genesis i think is more playable than yes, that port yeah, of space yeah, harrier yeah. 2 that's fair. because that port of space harrier 2 is cha is, is somehow the the frame rate is worse than this port of super thunder blade or this version of super thunder blade and no auto fire um, and, yeah and no auto fire so i will give them that that, that this is a better arcade um accurate version than the port of space harrier 2 on genesis and i haven't played the afterburner port on genesis either but i can't imagine it's it's any better mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> well super thunder blade is fine i guess it's like somewhere like between bad and fine but will e swat hold a candle Alex, tell us about e the city. <laughs> e SWAT.
E SWAT. <laughs> e SWAT is a game that uh, many times. Uh, um, the, the the first time the first time I ever heard about it was when I got Sonic's Ultimate Collection, and then it's on like the newer collections too. Um, it's a game that I've always looked at. I've played the first level a couple times before, and I've just sort of played it and been like, I get it, as I never really devoted any time into. And I have to say, I'm kind of upset at myself because this game is pretty cool. <laughs> um, ESWAT is a uh, side-scrolling shooter game um sort of like the original shinobi in a way instead of throwing the shurikens you're shooting a gun uh but it's the same type of thing we can you know go between different depths of uh play and you know walk on top of buildings and stuff and shoot enemies uh, it's also as difficult as the original shinobi you play as dupe oda and you are trying to take down this uh evil terrorist organization called i and in the process, you get access to the ESWAT uh, mech, like, armor suit, um, which is it's, it's a power armor suit. Uh, it's called Ice Combat Suit. Ice, Ice Baby. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> you get to ice all of your enemies. Uh, I think ESWAT is a game that the first couple levels, I think, leave a mediocre impression. Um because you're just playing as a random cop and you're just kind of shooting dudes. It feels kind of like Shinobi mixed with uh, Rolling Thunder, that Namco yeah. game. Um, it feels kind of like those two games kind of mashed together for the first couple of levels. And that's kind of what I thought the game was the whole way through. But after you beat a couple of levels, you do get access to that power armor for the rest of the game. And I think that's really where the game becomes a lot more fun. Um, is through like the next so what, like six stages, I think, you actually get to use the power armor. You get different weapons for the power armor. Uh, you get more mobility instead of just jumping up, you know, up on top of things. You, you can actually use like your burner um, on the back of your suit to actually fly around for a little bit. Or you can also use the burner for as, a, as like a special attack and like save it up. Um, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff in ESWAT. Some really tough bosses, especially near the end of the game. The game gets brutal. Uh, but you know what? With a game that's similar to Shinobi, I expect no less <laughs> to, to get my ass handed to me. And uh, I have to say, this was a game that surprised me. I, I kind of wish I gave this game a little more time before. I busted up my RoboCop shirt just for eSWAT. <laughs> Oh, I don't have I have I have the Sonic Green Hill running team shirt on. I don't have RoboCop shirt. <laughs> oh, um, I'll represent for uh, Duke here. <laughs> yeah, pleasant surprise. It was honestly like pretty fun. I mean, I only I stopped around stage five or so, but I have my save file ready to go. And honestly, it it plays pretty well. I don't find myself having to bust out like uh, rewind or save states. Um, at all, really. It, it does play similar to Rolling Thunder in the beginning, but, uh, like, you know, it's got those, like, high jumps. And honestly, the gameplay feels similar to Shinobi, too. Uh, I was thinking, even once you get the jetpack thing, um, there's a stage where, like, there's this ooze dropping from the ceilings, and I was getting big Shinobi 3 vibes. I think it's, like, a really cool, like, aesthetic experience. There's one point where you, where you fight this boss on like round three with the jetpack and like it doesn't tell you to like fly up or anything but if you fly up you can end find yourself on like an arena platform too uh it's pretty cool i and uh there's other games that allow you to like switch between your weapons like that i'm thinking like uh thunder force thunder force three uh that's the kind of vibes i was getting this kind of felt like a, a melting of like multiple sega gameplay elements and i appreciated that yeah, the weapon system is sort of like I'm more familiar with Thunder Force 2, but it's it's sort of like the Thunder Force series where you have like a bar at the bottom, or like Radius as well. You have a bar at the bottom, you can kind of pick which of the things you want to use at any time, which was cool. Uh, you know, because you can get like a rocket launcher, you can get like a, a charge beam or like a super beam and stuff. Um, you know, and 
since you didn't play past stage five, I, I, I will say it does get very hard, um, especially and there's this level where you have to do a lot of maneuvering with your jetpack, where you have to do like a lot of like um, going from like a platform and then like going like over, down, over, up and then to another platform because there's like things already you'd, like you can't touch. Um, so it does become pretty tough with the platforming later on. But I was surprised by how well like each stage had like its own little gimmick and like had its own you know little flavor that was nice because uh you know like even the second stage even though you're not the in the suit yet it's like break in the cyber prison and it doesn't really tell you how you're supposed to make it through this prison area and i actually got a little lost the first time i played through it because i went i took the little elevator thing and i went up to the top of the cyber prison uh you know prison where like you can get in and i kind of shot all the enemies and traveled back down and then, and then i got back down i was back at the beginning and i was like where am i supposed to go and it turns out one of the the walls i should have just paid attention said go next to it and <laughs> where you can drop down you, you, you can just cross over and leave uh, but like it doesn't make it uh, obvious but it was neat it was like oh that's a cool little like this this level wasn't as straightforward as the first one yeah and round two the stages do round two is like that yeah. too because it's like you're on this rolling platform but there's like bars going up and it doesn't occur to you like oh this is like a prison and i can like actually like scroll my way up to different prison cells <laughs> There, there are a lot of really cool uh, different themes. I like the one you talk about with the ooze. I like when you fight the mad scientist at the end um, and you defeat his robot and he's kind of like this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's just kind of frozen like that after you beat him. It made me chuckle. And um, I love all the voice samples. I love like mission complete <laughs> and stuff after you beat it. This was a really charming game um, that I hear nobody talk about. Never. Not once. <laughs> Soundtrack's good too. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was a bop. It was a pretty good soundtrack. Mm-hmm. I can't remember. Like I can't <laughs> replicate them. But honestly, like I was I was playing. I was like, oh, these are some good chip tune tracks. Unlike Super Thunderblade, where it just sounded farty. Yeah. Well, Super Thunderblade. When did Super Thunderblade come out? Eighty-eight. Yeah. This is ninety, so this has a couple of years on it. But uh, yeah. <laughs> The music's way better in, in East Light, and like I said, I can't remember any of the tracks as well, but I know as I was playing, I was enjoying the music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, I'd love to see this go against Shinobi. Yeah, well, you know, this, again, neither of us really knew uh, going into this that this would have been a really good matchup against Shinobi 3, and who knows, it might still get the do it. But we're going <laughs> to find out. On. Yeah, we, we we haven't decided how uh, how we're gonna progress. Like, if this does win, it could have a chance against Shinobi Three. <laughs> yeah, so. you gotta know is that the matchup y'all want? Have you is, you didn't know you wanted was some e swatch Shinobi knuckling up action? Well, you may you may or may not get that chance because uh, Super Thunderblade has a chance here. You know. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, you wanna you wanna go into pros and cons? Do you think we need to? Do you want to? <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> okay, so what about Super Thunder Blade? What do you think are the pros and the cons? Uh, pros, it is a functional sequel. I guess the Space Harrier 2 comparison puts in perspective. Uh, and that's about it. <laughs> Oh, auto fire! I like auto fire. It's, I could see Super Thunderblade being impressive in 1988 if I had just gotten a Sega Genesis and I was looking for some arcade action at home. But <laughs> 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 right, like that's pretty. It's not great when your positive has to have a but at the end. But but with that said, I could also play a better version on a handheld now. <laughs> so <laughs> so it's it kind of makes that perspective fade away. <laughs> well, the other launch titles are what like Altered Beasts and like. I think I'd play Alter yeah. Beast over Alex. Alex yeah. Kid, yeah. he he he's already out of the out of the contest. But even then, <laughs> of the losers, like I I might give it to Alex. Yeah, I I probably I might yeah I might actually play in Jenny Castle over. Super <laughs> if you I strap me to a chair, ever... <laughs> and, and my options are Alex Kid or Super Thunderblade. 
<laughs> I don't know. Oh my god, I was just thinking of like that. This is what they should have used in Clockwork Orange whenever, uh, whenever Alex is trapped is like strapped to the chair. Just put footage of Super Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> no, please, <laughs> I beg you. <laughs> Choppy footage for Super Thunder Blade. Yeah, I, I don't think I would have ever finished this if it wasn't for having to do this episode. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, it's a game that I've started multiple times and then I've been like, ouch, my eyes. And then I've started playing something else. <laughs> yeah. You know what? If they added continues, I, like to make this more fair or let you like customize the, the, the shot ratio, I think I, I would have been more inclined to try to finish it. But just seeing that, like I could have seven lives and have wasted them like by stage two. I just never, I never felt like authentically playing it. So uh, to me, the difficulty was probably the biggest turnoff. I could have managed the shitty frame rate. I wouldn't have loved it, but. Ouch, my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, eSWAT? Pros and cons? Uh, you start. Pros. It's you know I think it's just charming. <laughs> That's my first pro, is that starting it up, hearing the dumb eSWAT announcement at the beginning. It has like that Sega Genesis charm that like I think is lacking from a lot of other consoles and and games in general. Is like just I don't know. Se- oh, Sega Genesis games, a lot of them have their own flavor. You know, and I think eSWAT kind of helps like describe what that flavor is. Um, it's also just a really fun action platformer game uh, with some really unique mechanics buried in the later half of the game. Uh, like I said, the first couple stages, I think, might leave a bit of a mediocre impression. But if you can get past those first two stages and get the power armor, the game opens up and becomes a lot more fun. I so, I sort of wish you could have gotten the power armor earlier. Mm. Yeah, I think that it just plays super smooth. Like it's uh, like at, at no point would did I find it like confusing like what to do or where to go, and I never found the action particularly unfair. I thought like if I if there was a mess up, it was probably on me. And then stylistically, yeah, I think it is really cool. Like it's um, first off, you do have the announcer in the beginning of the game. Ease what? <laughs> we should do a uh, throwdown of sound effects by the end of this um, but I, I think the game is unique and has its own signature style and I appreciate that I if I had to give it a con I do think starting at the sewer stage it does become a little I wouldn't say overly difficult but it can feel a little unfair at points um but uh, honestly that's that goes for a lot of games in the 16-bit era especially like pla- like action platformers like this is that they also get get kind of like you know <laughs> extremely d- d- difficult during the last few stages of the game um so i don't know how much i can hold that against it but it is it can be seen as a con my biggest con is probably that i'm just not accustomed to jetpack mechanics Mm. I have this problem with Ranger X too. Really cool game, but I just I I can't do well in it because I feel like I'm navigating uh, too much with the controls. It's not bad. It's functional. It's fine, and I appreciate that your fuel regenerates. But uh, sometimes you don't got time for that. Not when uh, you know, mad scientist is firing at you. You know what, though? There was a few times that I had to regenerate my fuel, and my God, am I glad on the Switch version I could fast forward. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just I just hold, I just just held fast forward and got my fuel back up real quick. Because, <laughs> 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 like I said, that, that stage where you have to do a lot of maneuvering with the jetpack, um, you, you need that fuel. <laughs> like, you're going to die because you can't stop moving in the air. Pro tips with Alex. <laughs> Pro tips with Alex. Cheat. <laughs> This is the rewind and fast forward master here. He knows all the all the tricks. But on Sonic's Ultimate, you can't rewind as fast forward, but you can't save state, so I would recommend that. Mm. <laughs> all save right, your states. You Let's do- vote. 
Let's vote. Let's put it to vote. How you want to do this? Old Western style. <laughs> you have to wait for whoever draws first, and then you try and match them. Yeah. We'll do a stare off. Here we go. Ready? Yeah. He's hot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was it was obvious uh, when I because I played through Eastwatt first because um, I, I tend to do that anyway. I, I'll play through my game first and then I'll play whatever you're playing and I might beat it, I might not. And um, I, I played through Eastwatt first and I was like, man, that was fun. And then I turned on Super Thunderblade and I was like, man, Eastwatt's gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty obvious. Yeah. <laughs> But it was still worth like, the throw down. It, yeah, I have to give it a fair shake. You know, I'm, I don't think Super Thunderblade is the worst thing you could play in Genesis. You know, I, but I, I tell you what, Eastwatt, it's true hidden gem. <laughs> I yeah, I, I'm interested in like actually hunting down a copy now because like I didn't know why this game was like for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I I'm enjoying my playthrough right now. Uh, I hope to finish it, you know, probably use a couple save states here and there, but, uh, I can appreciate it. So e SWAT city I, under siege will be moving on to the next round. I, I do want to say though, and I could be totally wrong for future predictions, but I want to go ahead and call it. I do think in, in terms of games that have one to go on to the second round, I'm putting my money on e SWAT for going out first <laughs> <laughs> no matter what matchup it is yeah, yeah yeah it's like i'm like i'm trying to think i'm like is it better than vector man is it better than kick million is it better than sonic 2 or whatever i'm like i i, I man east what i love you but i don't know if you're gonna make it in the next round <laughs> hey well columns and uh columns three are coming up so oh shit yeah one of the columns has to make it <laughs> east one has a chance then <laughs> He wants has, has a chance. Too soon to call has it. A chance. <laughs> <laughs> what if what if Eastwatt wins the tournament? <laughs> It'd be the upset of the century. And the best uh, Genesis game. Like, Eastwatt. like we said, next time we we will return with uh Fantasy Star one and two. Actually, this time we won't switch it for Sonic games again. <laughs> yeah, I'll play at least to the first dungeon. We'll we'll figure it out. Yeah, we're we're not gonna beat them. We just don't have the time. That's what really was like last time. We were trying to fit it in, and we were both pretty busy. And we were like, "Yeah, no." <laughs> mm -hmm. So this time we're gonna give it a little bit of time for each one, but we're not gonna beat them. We're just gonna, you know, dip our toes in, yeah. get the, get a feel for them, and then we'll come back and report. It's our it'll be our first episode doing one of the games that's not a Genesis game because Fantasy Star One is the Master System game. Mm -hmm. So that'll be fun. All right. Look forward to it, Spencer. Yeah. To everyone else, be sure to subscribe. <laughs> and then the next episode we release is fucking Congo Bongo versus Zaxxon or where the hell we have up against that. <laughs> Secretly the one he was looking forward to. Just didn't want to admit it. <laughs> Congo Bongo? Yeah. <laughs> Do you think Spencer's a big Congo Bongo fan? I think he prefers Zaxxon. Zaxxon? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Spencer, put it in the comments. Congo Bongo or Zaxxon? Zach's on, Slack's on. He keeps his pants on. On. Keep pants on. <laughs> All right. You want to give me your best, you best e-swat before we go? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah Announcer right. style. Like, like this was going in the game. Yeah. Okay. Get in the mindset. Okay. I'm Okay. Here I am. I'm going to blow on the cartridge. I'm going to put it in my Genesis. Click. And then I'm going to turn on the system. E SWAT. That's good. Thank you. <laughs> All right, you're up. I'm okay. playing the uh, Sega Genesis collection. I'm inserting the virtual cartridge. I see the Sega logo. E SWAT. <laughs> also good. Subdued, but good. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to make like like the muffly sound of the Genesis. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Understood. <laughs> Mission complete. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> See you next time on Turbo Throwdown.
Spencer, keep your pants on. <laughs> Two balls fall down.